Hi guys, my name is Blair, I'm one of the primate keepers here at Rockhampton Zoo and today I'll be telling you guys a little bit about our chimpanzee family. So Rockhampton Zoo started out in 1986 with two chimpanzees, Cassius and Oki. Cassius is unfortunately our only remaining original male, he is now 48 and a half years old. Now Cass and Oki arrived at Rockhampton Zoo in 1986 from a little zoo in the Gold Coast in Coolangatta called Natureland. That zoo was closing down so Rockhampton Zoo stepped in and took the two boys on to give them a new start in life. They moved into what we now refer to as the old exhibit and then in 2010, after 25 years of living in the old exhibit, moved into what we now refer to as the rainforest exhibit. The rainforest exhibit is over a thousand square meters of three-dimensional space and also includes a new management facility out the back for the chimpanzees, so it's absolutely fantastic. By building this new exhibit and the facilities out the back, we were then able to consider introducing our first female chimpanzees in Rockhampton Zoo's history. In 2012, two years after moving into the new exhibit, Cassie and Oki met their first ever females, Samantha and Holly. So Samantha is now our oldest female at 36 years old, and Holly is now 31 with her first baby, Gindali. Holly and Samantha, just like Cass and Oki, were what we described as socially deprived chimpanzees because of the situations they had been put in by humans. Cassius and Oki were hand-raised on the Gold Coast, and because of the way that they were hand-raised, they ended up very socially deprived and missed out on what we call the chimpanzee learning period, as did Holly. Now, when chimpanzees miss out on the chimpanzee learning period, which is the first 10 years of their life, they miss out on all of the learning opportunities that chimpanzees need in order to be chimps. So chimpanzees, they're actually born not knowing anything, really. They don't even know how to climb. Chimpanzee infants have to learn how to climb and have to be shown how to do a lot of things in life. And for male chimpanzees, if they're not shown how to mate, unfortunately they never will. So when we introduced Samantha and Holly in 2012, unfortunately things didn't quite go as well as we were hoping. We were hoping with having two males and two females that would have, have the pitter patter of some baby chimpanzees. Unfortunately, that never happened. With them being hand raised as well, we did have a few issues with Holly. Unfortunately, Holly suffered from quite severe anxiety and depression because of the situation she had been put in by humans. Holly unfortunately was hand raised like a human child and she spent the first five years of her life living in a house being raised like a human child. Because of that, she unfortunately ended up with a lot of mental health issues and when she moved to Rockhampton Zoo in 2012, we had to work on those. After her introduction to Cassie and Oki along with Sam, she unfortunately decided to have Cassie is bit up and she had Samantha and Oki help her with that. So the best situation for Holly back then was to separate her and work on her mental health. So Holly was separated from the other chimpanzees for 18 months and after she was assessed and it was decided that she was okay to go back in, she was slowly reintroduced with the other chimpanzees. Unfortunately after her reintroduction, Oki then had a heart attack and passed away. Oki suffered from cardiomyopathy which is enlargement of the heart. Now heart disease is something very common in us humans. It's also common in our non-human non grade 8 families, both in captivity and in the wild. There are many projects around the world that are trying to find the cause of grade 8 heart, heart issues, heart disease, and working on trying to save grade 8s both in the wild and in captivity from heart health issues. So Samantha is our other female that was originally introduced to our two boys. She's now 36 years old. She arrived originally to Moko Zoo in 2010 from Willowbank Wildlife Reserve in New Zealand. Then alongside Holly, she moved up in 2012 to Rockhampton Zoo. So Samantha was born in New Zealand. Um, she was born at Dunedin Botanical Gardens in Zoo uh, to her parents, Charlie and Coco. Now Charlie and Coco, her parents, were actually born in the wild. We don't know a whole lot about the history of her mother. All we know is that she was born in the wild, she ended up at Taronga Zoo, and then she moved to the Dunedin Botanical Gardens in Zoo. Whereas Samantha's father, we know he was born in what was now known as the Democratic Republic of Congo. He was originally captured by poachers and his family was slaughtered. Unfortunately for chimpanzees, that is still happening today. Around 3,000 great apes are being stolen out of the wild every year for the legal pet trade and their legal bushmeat trade. So for Charlie, Samantha's father, he actually originally ended up in Belgium as part of the illegal pet trade. From the pet trade, he was then sold to a circus in New Zealand where he was used as a performing chimp. So Samantha's father Charlie used to ride motorcycles and smoke cigarettes and when he was deemed too dangerous he was welded in a steel crate he could barely turn around in. Eventually when that circus was closing down he was moved to the Dunedin Botanical Gardens and Zoo where he was introduced with Coco. 
After a number of years, little Sam came along, they moved to Willowbank, and after moving to Willowbank, Sam's parents then had a little boy named Milo. Unfortunately, Milo and his mother Coco both passed away, and Samantha, prior to moving to Australia, lived with just her father for about 15 years. So, compared to Holly and Cassius, Samantha has actually had a better life. Um, she is one of the lucky ones. She was parent-raised. So she doesn't suffer from a lot of social issues like the other chimps. She's a bit more socially awkward than socially deprived like Cass and Polly. So the all of the chimps were introduced. Unfortunately, Oki did pass away. Um, Holly then beat Cassius up and had to be separated. She was then reintroduced, um, and then we decided the best thing for our chimp population was to bring two chimpanzees over from Israel. So in September 2015, we welcomed Alon and Leaky from Ramagan Zoological Gardens in Israel. Alon was a juvenile chimpanzee back then. He was only about 30 kilos. He's half the size he currently is. He's a very young juvenile male. Leaky was a young female as well. The reason we brought the two chimpanzees over from Israel was for two main reasons. One of them was to bring socially normal behaviours, chimpanzee behaviours, to our socially dysfunctional group. And they've done exactly that. Pretty much on arrival, the two chimpanzees wanted to get in with Cassius, so they were introduced pretty quick smart. After being introduced, our other chimpanzees started showing a lot of natural behaviours like tool use and grooming, which doesn't sound exciting, but for us it was very exciting at the time because that was the start of the rehabilitation process. The other reason that Elon and Leaky were brought over from Israel was part of the species survival plan. Now, chimpanzees are unfortunately threatened with extinction in the wild. Their numbers are dropping down to around 100,000, and that 100,000 is split between around four different subspecies of chimpanzee. So to keep our captive populations genetically viable, we need to ensure genetic diversity. Alon and Leaky are unrelated to all of the chimpanzees in Australasia. So their breeding, and Alon breeding with our other females, is critically valuable to the species survival plan. Any infants born here, depending on their sex, will eventually move to other zoos so that they can share their genetics and help keep the species survival plan viable for the next 50 to 100 years as part of the insurance population. So that's a little bit about Aliki and Alon. Not long after arriving, Alon went through a growth spurt. With his growth spurt, he also hit puberty. With puberty, he got Leaky pregnant, and then nine months later, almost nine months later, more eight and a half months, we welcomed our first ever baby chimpanzee, little Capri. So Capri was the first chimp to be born in Rockhampton Zoo's history and the first chimpanzee to be born in Queensland in just over 40 years, which is pretty special. I've been very lucky to watch Capri grow up over the last two years, which has been absolutely incredible. Alon then impregnated Samantha, our oldest female. Unfortunately, her boy did pass away at birth, which was unexpected, but it does happen. Uh, chimpanzees usually lose their first infant. Uh, it's part of the mothering process with chimpanzees. It's how they learn. And unfortunately for Sam, her baby passed away during the birthing process. Then not long after the birth of Samantha's infant, Holly gave birth to a little boy that has since been named Gendali, who is now three months old and is doing extremely well. We were a little bit worried about how Holly was going to go with an infant being hand-raised. It is unpredictable how hand-raised female chimps will raise babies, but Holly has been a superstar with her training. We've actually done a lot of baby training with Holly over the years to ensure that she was ready to have a baby and that she would be able to look after the baby. So things like bottle training and how to hold the baby, Holly has been taught. Um, luckily, she's actually just a natural when it comes to being a mum, and all of our training, which was really important at the time, has not been needed, which is absolutely fantastic. Now with chimpanzees, unfortunately, they are going extinct in the wild. Poaching and habitat loss are the main threats for chimpanzees. You may have heard of palm oil. Palm oil is actually an African crop, and it's mostly being talked about in Indonesia threatening orangutans. Unfortunately, because they are running out of land to harvest, um, to grow palm oil, they are actually now encroaching on the rainforest in Africa. So one thing you guys can do today to help save orangutans in Indonesia and chimpanzees, gorillas and bonobos in Africa is by buying sustainable palm oil. You can get apps on your smartphones like Palm Oil Investigations, which means you can scan the barcodes of the products you're buying and find out if it has palm oil in it and if it is sustainable palm oil. There's over 200 different names for palm oil that can be used, so unfortunately you can't look at the back of a product and go, oh, it's got palm oil in it or it's palm oil free. Um, some companies do promote that they are palm oil free, um, but the best way forward is to promote sustainable palm oil. With that as well, um, with your mobile phones, it, most people these days have a mobile phone. And the circuit board of every single electronic device you own is a metal called coltan. Now coltan is a mineral that is mined out of the Congo. 
And one of the reasons why they're currently mining it out of the Congo is because the Congo is so mineral rich. What you can do is, because it is fully recyclable, is you can recycle it through here, us here at the zoo, and we get $3 per mobile phone through our local recycler. All, that, all of that money goes to the Jane Gould Institute Australia, who do amazing conservation work for chimpanzees in Africa, as well as programs here in Australia like Roots and Shoots, which is educating our future generations so that they can, when they get into positions of power, make huge impacts to save our species for the future. If we don't make a small change today, unfortunately all great apes around the world will be extinct within the next five to ten years in the wild. And it's up to you guys to help us make a difference. Thank you for coming along for my talk today guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.